Hi everyone from Medstream. Um, welcome to Cat Lab One at Instituto Dante Pazanese de Cardiologia. My name is Dimitri Siqueira, and I'm joined here today by a wonderful team to share with you a very interesting case of uh, uh, percutaneous treatment of aortic stenosis. Uh, my left, Alberto Cervoni, who's going to be our first operator for this case. Michelle Birchi, our fellow from uh, Structural Heart Intervention. Uh, Tito Paladino representing uh, the ECHO team. Uh, and we have also Camila and Vinicius from Anesthesiology, a great team of nurses and, and technicians. And without further ado, I would like to introduce our case. May I have the first slide, please? So this is a 77-year-old gentleman, uh, non-frail, independent. Um, he has uh, atrial fibrillation and presented in our hospital with symptoms of heart failure due to aortic stenosis. Surgical risk assessment, you can see the error score 2 is 1.1 and the STS score was estimated as 1.2. Um, here uh, you can see the lab tests, unremarkable. The renal function is normal with, with a GFR of 82. Um, he is in, on sinus rhythm uh, yesterday. And these are the echo findings. You can appreciate here that the uh, LV function is uh, well preserved. Ejection fraction is 60%. He has a mild uh, mitral uh, regurgitation and a severe aortic stenosis. The mean gradient is uh, 67, and the aortic valve area was estimated as 0.7 square centimeters. This patient uh, underwent a CT evaluation, and you can see here that uh, the aortic valve is very calcified. Um, it seems to be a bicuspid. We will see uh, some images uh, in, in the next slides. But in fact, um, this patient has an uh, diameters of 22 millimeters per 25.5. The annular area was uh, 420, and the diameter of uh, Valsalva sinus are all, all above uh, 30 millimeters. He has no disease on the ascending aorta, it's not dilated. And here you can see uh, the coronary distance to the annulus, uh, all above 12 in the, the left and the right. And here um, you can see some images uh, taken from the, the aortic valve. It seems to, to be a rough uh, between uh, the right and the left coronary cusp. Uh, you can see that the valve is uh, very calcified. Uh, this is the projection that we estimated from, from trimension, we're gonna use during valve implantation, aerial six caudal uh, eight. And here you can uh, appreciate um, the 3D reconstruction of the iliac and femoral vessels. This patient has no um, lesions, the diameters are, are good. Uh, but uh, he has a lot of tortuosity on the, the iliac uh, vessels. So this is one of the, the main challenges for uh, this case. Uh, we have done some measurements and, and uh, we, we simulate the implantation of uh, two different sizes of a balloon expandable valve. Uh, we use the, the circle method uh, to do this, and you can appreciate here that uh, the uh, 23 um, in, on the top and uh, 24.5 uh, below, uh, just to to simulate um, uh, the size of the prosthesis that we are gonna implant here today. 
So in summary, 77-year-old uh, male with uh, severe and symptomatic aortic stenosis, non-frail, low surgical risk, and anatomical challenges for TAVR, uh, bicuspid aortic valve, and arterial access tortuosities. So after hard team discussion, um, we decided for, for TAVI, and our plan here is to do the case uh, under uh, conscious sedation uh, with um, uh, echo uh, TTE uh, monitoring. We're gonna perform uh, valve implantation use, uh, using uh, LVY pacing. We're gonna use the left axis and due to the tortuosity, um, we, we discussed and um, we decided to, to perform this case uh, using just one uh, arterial axis. Um, and we're gonna predilate the valve and implant a balloon expandable THV, my valve from Mario Life Science. So uh, before we, we move on, uh, maybe we can review some echo images. Please, Chito. Uh, well, first of all, in this uh, first picture here, we can see the right ventricle above the left ventricle, the left atrial and aortic valve. We see that the normal function of the right and left ventricle and a lot of calcification and uh, thickening of the leaflets of the aortic valve. Uh, we see <coughs> to, uh, a mild increase in the volume of the left atrial with 39 millimeters per meter square, and all of the measures are uh, normal. As you can do a short axis in the aortic valve, we see the uh, bicuspid aortic valve with the fusion of the right and left cusps with a lot of calcification. Analyzing the contraction in the four, two, and three chambers, we see no alteration on that. Even in the boot slice analysis, we see from the apex to the uh, basal segments without any alteration here. Left ventricle uh, ejection fraction is uh, normal too, 60% of that. Three dimensional right ventricle ejection fraction, normal too, with 53% and fact two, 43%. Analyzing the flow, we see in the mitro, mitro <coughs> valve, valve regurg. It's a mild regurg. We know gradients beyond that. Uh, we see the tricuspid valve with a mild to moderate regurg and a pulmonary artery systolic pressure around 36 millimeters mercury. And finally, in the aortic valve, a lot of calcification. We, we can see any important calcification in the left ventricle alpha tract. We see a mild moderate regurg at this site with the max gradient about above 80 millimeters mercury, a mean gradient above 60 millimeters uh, mercury, max velocity around 4.7 meters per second, area estimating 0.7 centimeters squares and index that for the burst surface area, 0.45 centimeters square meter square. Just that. Okay, Chito, thank you. So, Beto, uh, maybe we should um, demonstrate what we did so far. Maybe we, we can show here um, the groin of the patient, please, and the, the angel. Yeah, okay, thank you. great. And the camera for both, please. Okay, yeah, okay, great. So, Alberto, we decided to use the left um, femoral arterial axis for both the delivery system and for um, the second axis, just to perform uh, the, the angio angiograms required for um, valve implantation. So uh, the sequence uh, that we, we performed here was, first, uh, we got the uh, left uh, femoral axis uh, using ultrasound guided puncture. Yeah. And then um, you can appreciate on the fluoroscopy the tortuosity of the, the left uh, femoral and iliac vessels. This is the first angel that we got just to, to demonstrate that we puncture at the right side at the common femoral uh, artery. And then we already placed uh, one proglide uh, 
just for uh, uh, hemostasis at the end of the procedure. And then after that, we got the second access here, uh, just one to two centimeters below the first uh, puncture. And we think that this secondary access uh, has some advantages uh, because of the tortuosity of the vessel. So we can use this access to aid um, the large bore sheet placement mm. using a body wire technique. So that's what we did. Um, we placed a long six French sheet on the secondary axis uh, with a pigtail and inside the pigtail, a uh, stiff wire, a Lunderquist. And then we are able to place the large bore uh, sheet, uh, the 14 French uh, Python without any uh, difficulties, as you can appreciate here. So in fact, now we can use the secondary access for um, pigtail and, 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 and geography during valve implantation. And in the end of the procedure, uh, we can do a, a control and geography just to detect uh, potential complications that may occur uh, during uh, the procedure. And we also can treat uh, with a balloon or even with a cover stent from this uh, secondary access. Yeah, that's great. And Dimitri, in your opinion, do you think the radial artery as a secondary access will be not able to perform this case? Well, Roberto, in fact, um, radio is our um, default uh, secondary access during TAVI procedures because um, there are some evidence that uh, radio access reduce uh, vascular complications during uh, TAVI. But in this case, um, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult, uh, cumbersome, to treat any potential complication that may occur uh, using the, the left uh, uh, femoral artery. Yeah, that's a great explanation. But thinking about complications, why not using the contralateral side? Well, that's, that's also um, a good question. I think that uh, in practice, most operators uh, prefer to use the contralateral femoral artery for the secondary access. But in this case, uh, we think that it would be difficult to cross over to the right, uh, to, to cross over to the left from the right of femoral artery due to tortuosity. Mm. So we decided to, to use this technique uh, previously described, the uh, ipsilateral access. That's awesome. So we are, ready, we are ready here to, to cross the valve. We're going to use um, Amplat's left one diagnostic catheter and a regular uh, straight uh, wire. So you have already placed the AR1, the Amplat one, in the art root. Sometimes another uh, catheter is needed, but it went easy, right? Yeah. Okay, so we already crossed the aortic valve with a straight tip um, guide wire. And then Alberto is gonna insert the Amplatz catheter in the, into the left ventricular cavity. And then we are gonna exchange um, the straight uh, tip wire for a uh, long uh, j tip regular wire. I'm going to do some curve here on the wire. Let me help you. Thank you. And then we're going to exchange um, the Amplatz 1 catheter for a pigtail just to, to get some uh, hemodynamics. 
to be really gentle. Mm -hmm. I think it's a okay. good position. It's a safe position. Okay, can you help me? Okay. Do you think so, this step to place the pigtail catheter in the interior of the left ventricle is an important step before putting the stiff wire? Yeah, we, we're still doing that. Um, we know that we can use the amplex left to, to place the extra stiff wire, the, the, the Confida or the mm -hmm. Safari, but we still replace the the, uh, the implant catheter for the pigtail just to get uh, some hemodynamics and to help us to place the, the stiff wire. So maybe you can show the hemodynamics, please. So here you can appreciate the gradient, uh, let's say peak gradient of uh, 70 yes. millimeters per mercury. And it's also important to record the, um, the diastolic uh, aortic pressure before the procedure, just to compare and to, if, if the patient has some, some leak after valve implantation. That's awesome. So we are ready now to place the uh, extra stiff uh, wire. Confida, por favor. And our plan here is to, to perform a predilation. This is a bicuspid valve. And we are going to do an injection. Uh, during balloon inflation, um, just to to decide about uh, sizing, we are in doubt about uh, 23 or 24.5 uh, millimeters uh, my valve. And Dimitri, when talking about di bicusp intervention, tavern in a bicusp intervention, what are the current evidence to support that? Well, Alberto. Um, we have no uh, randomized uh, data yet, but um, some uh, registry, big registry, and some observational studies uh, shown uh, encouraging results um, with good clinical outcomes, low rate of uh, paravalvular leak. And th there's some suggestion that uh, stroke and, and pacemaker rate may be higher for uh, bicuspid as compared to tricuspid valve. So I, I think that we should uh, be very careful when um, selecting uh, young patients with bicuspid mm. uh, for, for TAVI and look for the anatomy. I think it's very important uh, in this regard to see the bicuspid uh, type, uh, the amount of calcium, distribution of calcium, if the roughness is very calcified, so we think that uh, this case. Um, yeah, and we have to take in mind for... that the sizing for a tri bicuspid valve is quite different from the tricuspid one. Usually, we just use the annular area to for choose tricuspid, right? the THV size for a tricuspid yeah. one. But in the bicuspid one, we have another strategies as an intercommissural distance to classify the type of the bicuspid, if it's flare, tapered, or tube. Mm -hmm. and usually, when we are leading with a uh, tapered valve, a uh, smaller size of valve is required. Yeah. We, we not rely just on annular measurement on the area, for example. 
we try to to look for uh, intercommissional distance and we use the uh, circle method and sometimes we do a balloon sizing like this case yeah so we are ready for um a little balloon sure. pre-dilatation mm -hmm. we're gonna use um LV wire pacing for that. Bomb in 12, 12, por favor. Colocar um. Bobinho, deixa a bomba 12, 12, tá? Let's yeah. let's check the pacemaker first, yeah, and then go. we we yeah, proceed one. with um, valvuloplasty. Testar o marca passo, por favor. Pacemaker on, 100. I think we can see in the screen the hemodynamics and the angel at the same time. Okay. 120. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Good capture. So, pacemaker off. Eu preciso do guia aqui, tá lá no alto. Agora. Subiu quando voltou o balão. Hmm? Ok. Can I go? Yeah. Vamos ver um pouco do pigtail. That's it. Ok. Think it's a good position? So, pacemaker on. 120 180 Okay, film. Okay. Pacemaker off. Let's try again. <clears throat> Let's wait for uh, hemodynamic recovery. Mm. This is not uncommon when we no. are dealing with bicuspid yeah. to balloon to pop up uh, during um, valve implantation. Okay. Can we go? Yeah. I'll put a little bit down okay. now. <clears throat> Pacemaker on, 120. Hundred and eighty. Okay. Okay. No. Pacemaker off. Yeah, it's a little bit hard. Okay, let's try again. Yeah, we were able. You can see the the pressure. Mm -hmm. A little bit down now, the thing here. Okay. Pacemaker on. Hundred and twenty. Two hundred. Okay, go on. Injeta. Okay. That's okay. And pacemaker off. That's it. Okay. Is he recovering? If you can show the hemodynamics also. 23. 23. Let's uh, see the angel again. Yeah, uh, see. Just to. So you can see here that. Uh, there is a minimal waste, and this is a 23 balloon. So uh, we think that the, the 23 um, THV is gonna do the work, right? Yeah. So we can see that the predilation helps with uh, useful information to yeah. decide what to do when you have doubts. In case of the, to select the, 
the THV size, we can see this degree mm -hmm. PVL with the selected balloon. Mm -hmm. We can estimate the risk of coronary obstruction. And we also can see the behavior of the THV in the aortic valve. So, Alberto, maybe you can show uh, some features of the the MyVal uh, THV. If yeah. you can have uh, the slides, please, again. Of course. So, let's move on. It is a, it is a balloon expandable valve that has intermediate size as 21 and a half, 24 and a half, 27 and a half and extra large sizes as 30 and a half and 32. In addition of the traditional sizes of 20, 23, 26 and 29. It also comes with anti-calcification treatment, a bovine pericardium leaflet with a <coughs> sternum pet puffing that minimizes the incidence of PVL. The frame is made by Nico, Cobalt and Alloy that gives a high radial straight and a good radial opacity. It goes on a 14 frame expandable shift called Python and has the possibility to retrieve the crimped valve in case of inability to cross the annulus. So we have 53% of open cells regions, so as a, a good coronary access. And as you can see, the valve has a pattern in the fluoroscopy. As you can see there, the, we have a first dense band, a second light band, and a second dense band. Usually, we place the second dense band in the base of the pigtail catheter on the non-coronary cusp, and it gives us a positioning of 30% or 25% ventricular positioning. So, the system, the navigator, has one only step, that's to apply the deflection, has a great flexibility, as you can see in the screen. And usually we use a 14 French expandable shift. From the 27 and a half on, we have to predilate with an 18 French introducer. So I think it's it. Okay, Obed. <coughs> so. Um... In terms of um, our experience here with the with the my valve, could you share with us with us uh, our clinical results? Yeah, it's a great question. We have more than 105 case performance performance since December 2020, and we have a good clinical results, a low pacemaker rate with only one digit, like four to to five percent low PVL uh, <clears throat> incidence, and we have a good hemodynamics as well. So, and, and what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of um, this type of valve as compared to other balloon expandable systems? Yeah, that's a great question. We, I think a good point to highlight is the the <clears throat> intermediate size that we have. We have done a more tailored approach for the patient. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he, it is crimped directly in the balloon, it's a good feature. And we can retrieve the valve in case okay. of inability to cross any structure or the annulus. And the system, the navigator, is really flexible. But mm -hmm. in other hands, we lose in pushability. Okay. Sometimes it's a bit harder to cross some mm -hmm. structures. And, and other um, disadvantage, we need time because we don't have any mid to long-term data uh, on yeah. this valve, right? Yeah, we have uh, long-term data. We, we need uh, long-term data to... Okay, so <laughs> Chito, maybe we can see uh, the echo now, just to see if we open the valve and if there is uh, any uh, regurgitation yeah. just before valve implantation. Yeah, actually you can see here the... Uh, APCO four chamber view, we see a bigger uh, regurg in your position. Maybe it's moderate to severe here. Uh, we measure the, the, 
the gradient after the expansion, we see the maxim, maximum gradient drops just to 40 millimeters mercury. Uh, we see an increase in the mitral regurg too. Maybe it's due to the elevation of the left ventricle pressure inside. Mm. So it's nearly moderate mitral regurg. And tricuspid regurg just follows the same uh, feeling that we have now a moderate tricuspid regurg with a small increase in the aortic pressure in the pulmonary artery. Around 36 plus 5, it's something around 41 millimeters mercury. No precardial effusion, and we don't have any alteration of the contraction. Okay. So maybe we can show now uh, the delivery system. Yes, can I? It's can important I? to check uh, how the valve was uh, crimped. We can show here. Can I show? So it's important to see the orientation of the THV. As you can see here, we have the skirt in the distal part and the open cells region in the proximal part. It means it, it is aortic position. Okay. Another important point is to check the volume in the in the flator. We have to see if it is nominal or we have more CCs. Yeah, 18 so, uh, ml. So as we are dealing with a aortic, we have to put with the logo facing upwards. Okay. And then we can go ahead. Okay, so we are ready for um, valve deployment. Patient is very stable despite uh, the aortic regurgitation. Got the wire? Can I? Yeah. <clears throat> so, Bert, in terms of positioning uh, during uh, bicuspid interventions, do you think we need to put the valve a little bit higher? Yes, Dimitri, the, the positioning for a bicuspid valve is quite different from the tricuspid one. Mm -hmm. Once we we have the raffi and the point of an anchoring the valve is quite higher. Okay. So usually we tend to implant the valve quite higher as well. Can I have a... Can I see it now? Okay. <laughs> Almost there, right? Let me show pass it by. Mm, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do the deflection here. Yeah. As, as I told you before, we have uh, only one step is to apply the deflection. If you're okay, I can, yeah. can go on. Yeah, okay, let's see. Okay. I think there's some interaction with the pigtail. Maybe yeah, we, we are we using should replace it. We are using the same artery. Sometimes we can have some interaction. That's why we, we we place a long sheet, right? Yeah. Okay. So can we put the working position for the angel? And then we can cross the the wall. So let's check the pacemaker again. Let's go. Just before implantation. Okay, it's a good idea. Pacemaker on, 100. Okay, 150. Okay, great. Yeah, we have Pacemaker a good off. Okay. okay. So I'll try to cross the, the valve, okay? Okay. Okay. Can you yeah, it's in a good position, right? <clears throat> Maybe you should deflect again here. Let's perform an angel to see the position if, if okay. it's okay. Angel. 
Well, I think it's in a good position. Yeah, I think so. We're okay. quite on the on the light band to position a little bit higher. I think yeah. it's a good position. So let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Base yeah. maker on, 120. Okay, 200. Go. Injata? Yeah, that's a good position. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And pacemaker off. Okay. Let's retract the balloon here and let's see the echo. Hemodynamics are fine. So as we told, we, we implanted a little bit higher because of the Rafi. Okay. So the anchoring point will be at, at that point, like quite higher. So let's check the echo, Chito. Yeah. Oh, first of all, uh, we can see here the four, two and three chamber without any uh, contraction anomaly, no precardio fusion. Uh, we see again a mild mitral regurge. Now we're going to analyze the aortic valve. We can measure here uh, the gradients beyond that. Just A, the max gradient, and mean gradient about 3.6. Now you're going to search for some bulb leak. So any part of ovular leak? Just, just a second. It seems that on fluoroscopy, the valve is uh, well expanded and well placed yeah. a little bit higher. That's what we like uh, in bicuspid aortic stenosis. So, what do you think, Chito? I think we have a, a small one just in the inferior face of that. Proximal to the in anterior mitral uh, leaflet. Okay. So, diastolic pressure here is above uh, yeah. 70. So, maybe we can uh, do an angel. Let's uh, yeah, put let's, a pigtail yeah, in let's the left the system and put the measure pigtail. some gradients and do an angel. Usually, we, we don't perform an angel with a guide wire or a stiff guide wire across the, the, the THV. Yeah, that we too try much to interaction. Exchange, with yeah, we try to exchange the, the wire for a pigtail to check the gradients, to do some angel, and then, if needed, we can recross and pause dilate it. And the pigtail is also important to see the hemodynamics, the mean gradient, the peak gradient, yeah. invasive one. Okay, wants to see the hemodynamics now. Okay. Can I have a sign? Thank you. So, hemodynamics look great, huh? So, no significant gradient. I mean, eight millimeters, six millimeters. Mm -hmm and the diastolic pressure the aortic diastolic pressure is 73 
So from the hemodynamic standpoint, it's a very nice result. Mm. Let's do an angel. Let's go. Let's colocar 20, 20, por favor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we are ready to inject. Oh, I think it's a good result. Let's, yeah, let's I think say so. mild paravalvular leak and the valve is um, well expanded. Yeah, considering the amount of calcium that yeah. we have before and the type of uh, aortic stenosis, the bicuspid yeah. one, we have a, a really good result. I think we are done here. And we can see that the THV also is touching the similar tubular junction, right? Yeah. And I think it's, it's going to be uh, difficult to expand this valve more because of the rafe. And, and but we got a mild paravolo leak yeah. with good hemodynamics. I think that we are fine. Okay. So let's take care of the access. Tem outro? Outro introdutor. Abre outro introdutor. Abre outro introdutor. Só o introdutor. Ok. A lâmina para cortar. If you can zoom Alberto's hands here, because we're gonna uh, take care of the access. Aqui não give... dilatador pra gente, na lei? Uhum. Dilatador. Uhum. Let's place the dilator here. Yeah. That we can retract here. Gonna tight the air close. As you said before, we are uh, using one proglide routinely here in at Dante. Yeah. In As you can see, we have, we have, we have no experience. bleeding. Yeah. That's the only one. I think that we can um, pull this wire yeah, here. Yeah, go ahead. Because we have access um, from if the need. secondary access. Yeah. And then we can do some angel just to check for any uh, vascular complications. So. Usually we do a hand compression like for three to four minutes mm -hmm. and then we go to perform the... Okay. One trash problem. Let's check here. The grind. Wait for... I'm going to retract this. Yeah, the, the long shift. Let's do some angel. You can appreciate how torturous is the vessel, right? Yeah, we have no complications. Yeah. Really torturous. I can see nothing. We have a good okay. flow. 
good flow and uh, no, extravasation. no extravasation, no stenosis. I think that we are done. Yeah. So uh, we thank you uh, for the opportunity again to participate uh, during this uh, live streams, uh, uh, med stream transmission. Uh, it was a great honor for us to, to participate and we hope to see you again in the, the next future. I think that we have another case and uh, we can uh, change uh, uh, to the CAT Lab 4 for a, a coronary case. So thank you so much. Thank see you. you. Bye. Bye.